Hey fantasy fans, welcome back. It's Dan here with Tree Bird Book Reviews. And this is a video I've been thinking about doing for a while ago, talking about my top 10 favorite book covers that I own. So uh, gonna be, there's some caveats to this. So why don't we start uh, breaking that down? Hey guys, well, welcome back. Uh, as you guys see, we're going to be talking about my top 10 favorite book covers that I own. So these are, I'm going to list out some caveats for this list. So the first thing is there's no special editions on this list. It's not really fair. Like these are all just books that you could buy off the shelf or get an edition somewhere out there. They're not a special edition. They're not an extra like amount of cash you got to fork out. Because that's the thing about like with special editions, right? Like you pay for that premiumness, that artwork. So no special editions are in here. I have allowed myself to put, you know, <laughs> books from multiple authors on here, multiple series. Uh, there's not many of them, but they are here. So that's all I'm really doing with this. Yeah, I mean, so these are all going to be sci-fi fantasy books. And I guess the last caveat is I have to own the book. So I don't necessarily have to read it because some of these books I have bought because of the cover, because the cover is amazing. So what would, you know, put a book on this list? So typically there's real two real reasons, right? The first is the artwork just really spoke to me. I, I really appreciated and love the artwork. Some of these books I bought just because of the artwork. They're extremely beautiful and I wanted them in my collection and I will read them. It's just the artwork was just absolutely stunning. Or the artwork really conveys something about the story. It you know, it's you know, the artwork that the artist captured here speaks to the story. And you can see this, you know, developing that headcanon, or at least I use it to kind of develop some kind of kind of headcanon. So, uh, yeah, there's 10 books. I do have an honorable mention. So why don't we get to the honorable mention first? Hey guys, all right, number 11. I won't spend too long on this one because it is an honorable mention, but it is uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf. So this is one I bought just because of the cover. It's so cool. It's so funky. I love the vibrancy and the colors in it. Let's get a little bit closer here. You know, it just it just slaps this color, this cover. It's just beautiful color, covers, beautiful artwork. Uh, and I bought it because yeah, I just I saw it on the shelf. I'm like that looks cool I, I had heard about it, but um, I haven't really read like watched any reviews So this is a pure cover by I think it's absolutely gorgeous. So number 10 Number 10 is a book I have read and it is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. So this is book one in the band uh, I just like it because a the artwork is really really good Really good, you know You have it is a, it's a saga tale so you have the members of this mercenary band here. They're all they're all there in some form. And, you know, when you're reading the story, you're trying to pick out which one is which. And it's fantastic. I think the artwork is absolutely gorgeous. It really kind of sets the tone for what the story is. And I think his artist did a fantastic job. So, yeah, number, number 10 is Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Ames. Number 9. So number 9 is a book I recently got and I recently read. And that is... Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman. There's something about this book that just really appeals to me, you know, with the black on gold. Uh, and also, it's, it's like I said, you know, there's something on the cover that really kind of deals with everything that's kind of going on in the story. And that is Mjolnir. So Mjolnir is Thor's hammer. It's a prevalent piece in uh, this whole book. And I really love it. I just love the artwork. I love the, you know, this Norse like scrolling and like, it's just really good. It's it's a beautiful cover. It's 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 one of those covers where it's like less is more. And it's so simple that it just hits everything you want it to do. It jumps off the shelf and I absolutely love it. It's it's it would have been a cover by uh but I, you know I got it as a gift. So thank you for my friend who got me that as a gift. So that is number 9. So number 8. I, I'm going to cheat for number 8. You guys knew it was going to come. You knew I was going to cheat on one of them. So Number eight, these are both are Discworld covers, and um, they're my two favorite Discworld covers. And they're like Discworld, it's weird because you can have, like, you, I've, I said, I, I've only picked covers I own, but you know, Discworld can have really good covers or really absolute trash covers. So, here's an example of one that I said, like, it's just, just dog trash, <laughs> it's awful. So these two covers are, I'm going to pop them out here. It is, first one is Men at Arms. So this is my omnibus, but it has the Men at Arms artwork. It's absolutely gorgeous. I just love this one. I love it because, you know, 
it really talks, it's, it's really telling you what's happening in the book. You know, you have all these new Watchmen, they're all on a mission together, and it shows you who they are. The only one who's not on the cover here is Vimes, but that's okay. Like, you got Detritus, you got Cuddy, Angua, Colin, Navi, Carrot, they're all there. They're all new members of the watch and they're all on a mission and it's just go time. So I absolutely love the cover. It's beautiful. And it's just like, it just makes me like smile when I see it. Cause it's just like, it's like a heroic action pose. It was like strike a pose. So my next one, this one is my favorite Discworld cover because this one just screams Discworld in my mind. And this is the cover I associate the most with the Discworld. And the reason for that is because I, I, I've heard about the Discworld and I hadn't read it, but like I'd seen some Discworld books and this is the cover that I just associate with the Discworld and that is The Light Fantastic. It's a super cool cover. It's got you know, this vibrant blue, you know, you have a wizard on it riding a magical trunk with barbarians and a naked girl or a half naked girl. It's got uh, like death and like the four horsemen. So this cover just has everything. It's like, ticks all the boxes like barbarian yes like wizard yes like scantily clad woman yes yes like it's one of those like just it just ticks all the boxes and it's a fantastic cover and it's the one that i when i think Discworld, i think the light fantastic so let's move on to number seven all right guys number seven this is a very uh famous book i just think this is another cover where it's less is more but it does some heavy lifting and that book cover is The Hobbit. I absolutely think this cover is gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Uh, this is an illustrated, this is Tolkien's original illustration. So you got Smaug up here. And you know, everything that you see on this cover means something in the book. So obviously, like Smaug the dragon, you have the mountains, you have the forest, and then you have the river. So these all mean something in the book. And I think these tell us this test tells us about the hobbit and the adventure that bilbo baggins goes on and i just think it's an absolutely beautiful cover again it's less is more and it just pops off the shelf and it it just harkens back to the message that tolkien was telling because it is his own artwork so i love it number seven is uh the hobbit uh so number six i'm cheating again <laughs> but it's the same book so don't give me none of your mess right so number six, it is, uh, this is one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, it's, I gotta do that list. I know guys, I gotta do that list, my favorite books of all time. This is a book I've read 18 times. So that book is The Lord of the Rings and this is the cover, right? This is the cover by Donato Giancolo uh, or Cola. So I just love this cover. You know, you got Frodo in the ring and you got Aragorn, and you have Gandalf. Like, this cover just absolutely slaps. It's so beautiful. Uh, especially Gandalf on the back here. So I can get a good look. Like, look at that. His artwork of Gandalf. It's so beautiful. Such a stunning, stunning cover that he made. Even though it's number six. Uh, and then the next one is by John Howe. And that is our Gandalf striding Lord of the Rings absolutely beautiful too i couldn't put one above the other i'm like okay like do i put do i just have the same book on here twice and i put one above the other but i love them both so much so yeah this cover here by this artwork by john Howe, this is like the picture people have in their mind of gandalf and um i think it's fantastic yes i own two copies of lord of the rings who doesn't okay don't give me that but uh yeah those two covers are absolutely stunning they're so beautiful and they just, I think they really capture, you know, Lord of the Rings in my mind. You know, at least with one of them, you have the ring on the cover. So it's just beautiful artwork. And again, th that one is just, that one's a combination too. It tells me about the story. Beautiful artwork. Just love it. So top five. All right, guys, number five. So this one was a pure cover by, I saw it. I'm like, whoa, this book s just looks hard. This book, and that book is Elric of Mel Melnibony. So this cover is absolutely stunning. I don't know anything about the Elric Cycle or Michael Moorcock. I haven't read it, but I bought this. I'm going to read it. Like, don't worry about that. I'm going to read it. It's just this cover is absolutely gorgeous. Like, um, just it tells me so much about the character of Elric just by looking at this, this cover. You know, that he is, like, stoic. He's kind of tortured. And uh, 
I, I don't know, man. This just look this this is a cover buy, and this one I don't think it's gonna disappoint because everyone said Elric's good. I've you know I know a lot of booktubers now, and they've told me it's great. So this is not one I'm gonna regret buying. But beautiful, beautiful cover, amazing artwork there. So that is a pure. This artwork looks stunning, and I'm sure once I read the story, you know that artwork will capture the true um, <laughs> the true person of Elric. So number five, that is number five. All right, guys, number four. Getting to the top here, some of my favorite book covers. Like this one is it's a book I recently read this year, and the cover is absolutely beautiful. And that is Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. Just <laughs> Christopher Rocchio. This is a this is actually a, a different artist from the la the last books in the series. So this is, a, but it's very similar. You would if I didn't tell you or Rocchio didn't tell you, you wouldn't have known. So here's the cover here. The, just the beautiful purple. The purple is just speaks to like purple is one of those colors that you know speaks to, like royalty. Uh, just like it's just it's such a like just a special color. And when it's on a book and it's done well, it pops. And this book pops. So yeah, number three, uh, number four is Empire of Silence by Christopher Rocchio. Top three guys. Top three. So there's going to be something interesting that you're not going to see any Brandon Sanderson books on this list because I actually think Brandon's like North American artwork for all of his series sucks. Like they're actually trash. Um, I really don't like them. Like I was sitting down like making this list and I looking through every book on my shelf. I was like, these all suck. Like these aren't good. <laughs> so uh, Brandon just get a new artist. Cause I don't like any of your Amer North American covers. Uh, I'm probably gonna get heat for that, but whatever. Like it's fine. I can deal with it. I got thick skin. All right guys, so number three. <laughs> This is one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, and I just think the cover absolutely slaps and it speaks to the story, it pops off the shelf. It is iconic as heck. And that is Jurassic Park. I just think just this, you know, the blacked out skeleton of the T-Rex on the white cover. This is it, man. Like this is how you make a cover that lasts the, you know, the test of time. Like <laughs> this covers on the movie. It's on every movie since it's on six movies. This, this shows you how much work this cover does. You know, you can show this to anyone and be like, Jurassic Park. Like, they they know. They, you don't have to tell them. It's Jurassic Park. So that that one, and Jurassic Park A is one of my favorite movies of all time. One of my favorite books of all time. Michael Crichton is one of my favorite authors. And it just, yeah, this cover just does a lot of work. It's, it's again, it's one of those, like, less is more. So simple that... It achieves everything it needs to achieve with that with that cover. So yeah, that is it, guys. That is number three, Jurassic Park. All right, number two, top two. Okay, I'm excited for this one. This is one of my books. I, I think I read this when I read this last year. I read this last year, and this cover, <laughs> this cover and the sequel cover are some of the best fantasy covers out there in the world. You're not gonna find better. Whoever John Gwynn's artist is, so I'm going to show you right here. It is The Shadow of the Gods by John Gwynn. You have the big, crazy, scary dragon here. Like, look at the scale. Like, the scale like of this dragon and this little person here. Like, oh, like how this is how you represent scale. You have this crazy, scary dragon on here. And there is a crazy, scary dragon in this book. So... Uh, I just think this is absolutely gorgeous. This is how you make a book cover, guys. Like, this is... And you extend it all the way around. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. So, and I guess to mention, you know, The the Hunger of the Gods. I have pre-ordered that. I do have a physical copy coming just at the time of filming this. It's not arrived or it's not... It's just the book's not out yet. I'm just finishing. I'm reading that too. So, I absolutely love that cover. You know, I'll put it up here. <laughs> like, these covers slap, man. Like... I, I don't know what the third one's going to look like, but it's going to be good. You know it's going to be good. Like, how can you get better than, like, it's going to be hard to top those two because those two are, those two are fire, fire covers. So, all right, guys, let's get on to number one, my favorite book cover of all time that I own. All right, guys, number one, my favorite book cover. And this is two reasons. One, the artwork. Two, because of the impact of this this, this picture this artwork, and it is The Howling Dark by Christopher Rocchio. This is my favorite book art of all time. It's absolutely stunning. 
The artist just, I think his name is Kieran, just absolutely knocked it out of the park. You can buy a print of this. I'm I'm probably going to buy a print. <laughs> like, I probably, you know, if, uh, if it's my birthday this month, if I see, if I, uh, if I save up my pennies, I will probably buy myself a print of this because it's absolutely gorgeous. You know, you meet this character in uh, Howling Dark. And just the what the artist captures on this guy is on his face and how he's represented is just it does so much work for this the story. Absolutely love it. Uh Christopher Rocchio has some of the best covers out there, and this Howling Dark is my favorite cover of all time. Obviously, like uh like I <laughs> it's just it's it's just so good. It just it hits me on an emotional level that you know, when I look at that cover, like you feel the pain in that character's face. You see, you see the history in his eyes, and you know it's really, it's really hard to capture that for artwork. I find, at least for books, because you know, like with generic fantasy books, some of them just aren't good. Like, uh, like a perfect example here is like Wheel of Time. Like the Wheel of Time covers are notorious for being bad. Like, like, and that's why I have you know the Juniper covers there because the other ones suck. Like, they really, the artwork's like generic fantasy guard work here so and like again the same goes for like brandon sanderson like you know his special editions are worth buying because the artwork i don't think is that great on their north american editions so that's why i buy it but anyways guys i know this is a bit of a long video another top 10 of you know looking through my favorite art and this is gonna change this is one of those <laughs> this is one of those um like lists that it's ever changing because artwork just keeps getting better and better for books and people Authors are starting to realize, you know, people want attractive covers for their books. And I've realized making this list, I'm like, man, like I could easily make a top 10 list of book covers that I own that are just trash. They're obviously horrible. So that's probably going to be something that's going to be coming up soon. So again, guys, if you like the content, and you like the videos, please like, comment, and subscribe, you know, and as always, we'll see you next time. Cheers.